everyone has a story. What's yours? This is The Lounge on 812 Live. Exactly 23 minutes after 9. A very good evening to you and thank you very much for staying with us right here on A12 Live, Bernama Radio 24. Of course, every weekday we bring you the lounge. On the lounge this evening, we're speaking to Kevin Tessera and also Joel Lloyd, two musicians, great musicians, uh, who are coming up with some fantastic uh, programs, which we'll be talking about in a short while. In the meantime, good evening, guys. Good evening. Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's good, it's good. Well, uh, if you want to continue uh, checking your instruments, of course, uh, just so you know, we'll be having a little bit of a performance in the studio too. I didn't expect this. You know, guitar, bass, <laughs> Joe Loy and Kevin Tessera. Well, uh, guys, uh, let's talk a little bit about you guys and uh, you being involved in music. But from what I understand, you were learning upright bass a while ago. Can mm. you tell us a little bit about... Well, uh, in, in college, I was with this great teacher, Encik Ramlan Imam. Mm -hmm. um, he gave me my first window of lessons in uh, uh, upright bass. Mm -hmm. And from then on, um, I was like very interested in it so for this show actually with uh, Joe tomorrow I'll be using a silent upright bass so it's something very new for me a silent upright bass yeah it's uh, basically the bass without the body and it's mm -hmm. an electric uh, upright bass right so you you had your formal education a formal music education in Aswara Aswara yes. uh, and and what was it, what was it like you know a lot of uh, parents want to send their kids for music now and they say no you know they, we, we need to send them to private colleges because music taught better there huh. Uh, well, I think that's the, the previous stereotype, but right now, uh, what Aswara offers or what public colleges offer is that a greater, well-rounded music education in terms of I learned traditional music, I learned contemporary music, mm -hmm. and I got to play a fusion of traditional Malay music and jazz, so it's very interesting for me. Right, yeah. a fusion of traditional Malay music and yes. jazz, and, and all that you learned from Aswara. Yes. Right, so after you, you graduated, what happened then? After I graduated, I got my first job playing in an orchestra for, uh, or, or rather a band for this musical at Broken Bridges in KL Pak. Mm -hmm. So that was with James Ball, which was about, I think, a two-week run. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, I kept getting uh, offers to play every year. So it's, right. very, it's mm -hmm. been very interesting for me to get that opportunity. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if I did not go to Aswara, I might not have met James and I might not have got the opportunity. Right. Yeah. All in all, do you love what you're doing now? Oh, definitely, yes. You love it, yeah. yeah. Great, man. Big music. <laughs> well, Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself and your formal education in music. Yeah, I started playing the guitar when I was 15. Mm -hmm. I wanted to rock it up, become a rock star, right, and right. I decided, hey, you know, mm -hmm. uh, let, let's go study music. And uh, so I, I did mine at the uh, International College of Music, ICOM, mm -hmm. and I learned arranging because I, I wanted to try to you know, write and uh, perform the songs, mm -hmm. um, trying to mix, mix something that's already, uh, you know, uh, putting things together basically so mm -hmm. yeah so it was really fun right but but you know as people move on you know their dreams start to taper a lot mm -hmm. of musicians i know you know i have big dreams about coming up with their own album writing songs so on and so forth and then they end up teaching in a music school and it's always the case <laughs> and why do you think that's a problem uh well firstly i would say that's not a problem mm -hmm. uh, because for some that's actually a focus Right. For some, that's a business. It's a big, big business. Mm -hmm. uh, but unless you choose to say that um, teaching is a stereotype and I don't want to go it, then you know, pretty much a finish. So for me, I see every opportunity as my blue ocean. Mm -hmm. And so with um, with that in mind, uh, contrary to that, as as I graduated, I came out and um, I started a music school. You started a music school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so. I was again skeptical. Is it is this the usual stereotype that I was doing? And this is the end. Of, this is the end of my my career. That's it. I I fallen off. And yeah, yeah. and uh, but little did I know, I love teaching. Mm -hmm. I I love sharing knowledge. Okay. And um, one of the great things that that uh, teaching has brought me is that the parents mm -hmm. keep bringing their kids to me. You know, right. I I did not have to print a flyer or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I, I used to run a music school, the Mighty Music School in SS2. Uh, so if you go to Murnis, you see this this shop that used to say we used to call Mighty Music so mm -hmm. I used to run that school and um, uh, in three months uh, from 13 students I had 88 you know you had 88 students yeah so wow 88 80 paying students yeah I did real <laughs> good on time. Paying, on time no yeah. worries and uh, okay. I had six teachers and you know I, I realized then I became a group of yeah. <laughs> enjoying life you know and it was really good and really fulfilling and uh, again by word of mouth because um, the parents say you know you are making a difference in my kids life you know the, mm -hmm. a big a big 
a big statement, but you know, I see them practicing the music more. Right. They they are a bit more disciplined with their time. You know, mm -hmm. not many computer games. So like, wow, this is mm -hmm. this is good. It's not bad. And, the, and the, there was something that you were doing right. Yeah. yeah thank yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and what do you attribute your success to? You know, in being able to communicate with kids. It's not about teaching them, but it's more about communicating with them. I think it's just the, the love for knowledge and music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, again, I was skeptical. Though. These are kids. I like. Probably I need to go to some course uh, to have the proper lingo and all that. But um, just just be yourself, la, and be be real, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, be be real to these kids. Uh, they they open up to you a lot more than you think uh, when, right. when they see someone who's genuinely involved in their life. Mm -hmm. So what made you uh, close a school with eighty eight uh, good paying students? <laughs> Very good question. Uh, as, you, as you know, I said that I, I studied arranging. Right? So mm -hmm. deep in my heart, I was still writing songs. I uh, was trying to record them and all that. Mm -hmm. And I said that, hey, you know, I'm only 23 at the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, I think I can do better. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to challenge myself. I said, let's go the extra mile. And I said, um, I'm just going to take a demo that I recorded. And I'm just going to pitch at all the recording studios. Right. And um, so one came back to me, one really notable one. Uh, it, was, uh, it was called Sonic Productions at that time. Mm -hmm. And now it's known as Art <coughs> Studios. And, I, I thank Nick Lee for, for again um, taking me in. Uh, after many, many um, of those who tried, uh, who got rejected, mm -hmm. I, I, I got in. And um, so again, when I got in, it was like a whole learning curve altogether again. So I was teaching teaching kids how to play guitar as part-time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was interning in the studio for a whole year. Right. So just learning learning things. So uh, for <laughs> the, the most important thing when you go to a studio is not to touch the knobs. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's to know where the broom is. Where, where the toilet paper yeah, is. It, it was the same for us when we started <laughs> DJing back then. There was no um, mass comm courses, whatsoever. You had to play in clubs. And the first thing you had to do was, was wipe records uh, every day. You know, you come oh, in, you wipe with the LPs, uh, get, get the... Uh, that's, that's great, pay your dues, yeah. pay your get, dues. get coffee for the head DJ. Oh, if his girlfriend right. comes, that's go right. get a drink. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, yeah extra cream and no sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. I, so it was there that I learned to serve people, uh, serve, serve the artists, you know. Mm -hmm. So instead of coming and say, hey, I can produce a record for you. It's more like, well, how can I help you? you know, are you comfortable? Is it too cold? Is, are the lights dim enough? You know, mm -hmm. and, and because they see that, uh, I, I think again, uh, favor after favor is because of that, you know, good communication helps and so forth. And uh, I was recommended many, many projects after that. So mm -hmm. uh, from, from an intern, I got hired as an assistant engineer and subsequently a producer and uh, a, a studio manager. So I've been doing that for until now uh, I'm an independent uh, producer uh, singer songwriter arranger mm -hmm. lecturer as well mm -hmm. you so, do everything uh, try to do everything uh, again I, I Kevin you just still play the bass <laughs> I hope well um, as you can see I'm wearing this t-shirt right so um, I've gotten involved in the festival production over the years mm -hmm. uh, started playing but then got interested in the what goes on behind the scenes right and also there's this thing that we're doing tomorrow uh, by Moonshine KL mm -hmm. so Moonshine has been organizing open mic since uh I think November last year. So I've been like helping out Reza Saleh, um, maybe just sometimes host his shows, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm the doorman, mm -hmm. sometimes um, I also help to serve artists when they have problems on stage. Right, right. So, so, so you're largely involved in the Penang, is that the Penang Jazz Festival? Yeah, Penang Island Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. It's happening mm -hmm. this year, 29th of uh, November to the 2nd of December. Right, yeah. right. But if you go to the Borneo Jazz Festival this year, you'll see a really good looking guy there. <laughs> And wow, we'll, we'll be doing the intro then. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Okay, we'll, we'll come back just ah. after the top five news and find out more about Joe Lloyd and Kevin Sarah right here on A12 Live Banama Radio 24. You cannot hear it. Soft, right? Very soft. Oh, okay. Unless we put this into it. So when you talk, you just bend over. So I'm, I'm too loud. Right? Read the news first. Huh? Top 5 News MAS have no plans to discontinue the Aerobridge service for jet flight operations in its network. Acting Head of Strategic Communications, Nur Zalida Ahmad, said MAS will continue to provide the facility as part of delivering its branded customer experience to passengers in its efforts to become the preferred premium carrier. The federal government will reactivate the Your Works to upgrade the uh, Pan Borneo Highway with a cost of 423 million ringgit approved under the 10th Malaysian plan. Uh, Works Minister Dr. Shaziman Abu Manso said the works to upgrade the 1,000 kilometer highway will be carried out in stages starting middle of this year. 
The Turangano Entrepreneurs uh, Complex currently being developed by the Turangano Entrepreneur Development Foundation in Kampung Kubang Jila Manir in Kuala Turangano is expected to be open for business in June. The complex, estimated to cost 26 million ringgit, will become a one-stop center to cater for all the requirements of entrepreneurs, including providing information and facilities for business operations. The Olympic Council of Malaysia will form a committee to investigate the recent dope scandal involving two athletes after a meeting with the Indonesian Sea Games Organizing Committee on Wednesday. Its uh, secretary, Dr. Siakok Chi, said a representative from the Organizing Committee would meet the council on Wednesday to discuss the formation of a committee to investigate the case. An ordinary Iranians uh, took to the internet to spread the news of Ashgar Farhadi winning an Oscar for Best Foreign Language for his movie, A Separation. However, local media have accused Farhadi of tarnishing the image of Iranian society by focusing on a dark and bitter story rather than showing the country's progress. Stay with us for more updates right here on 812 Live, Banana Radio 24. Everyone has a story. What's yours? Join us at the lounge every weekday, 9.15 till 10 p.m. on 812 Live, Banama Radio 24. Welcome back to the uh, lounge right here on 812 Live, Banama Radio 24. We're currently talking to Kevin Tessera and Joe Loy, two musicians with big dreams and part of their dreams will happen tomorrow. So what's happening tomorrow, boys? Uh, well, tomorrow's gig, mm -hmm, the show, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. showcase is called the uh, Feedback, right. uh, organized by Moonshine, open mic session. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the great idea of this is that um, it's an open mic session where anyone can come right. and uh, present a song, mm -hmm. and uh, more specifically two songs. Anyone can come. Anyone can come. Mm -hmm. So the, the beauty of it is that it's very communal. You, know, you, mm -hmm. you meet fellow songwriters, you meet great talents, and mm -hmm. uh, you sit at the table and there's so much more to talk about. Right. And uh, so that's what what music is for me it, it builds the community mm -hmm. uh, it builds one another and um, so for me as, as much as I have been in the studios for many many years and and no, uh, not able to be part of that and now finally I can mm -hmm. uh, it, it's been really rewarding mm -hmm. and um, so the last few sessions I've been going out is to hang out meet the guys and then Monday Reza who's the organizer says that you know why don't you headline one of the sessions mm -hmm. at, uh, on, the, on the Tuesday at Jaya one I say, hey, great man, why not? You know, so mm -hmm. wait, wait, when they say headline one of the sessions, which means, well, what do you do as uh, a headliner in an open mic uh, gig? Yeah, basically, we were asked to perform um, a set of original songs. Mm -hmm. uh, cover is allowed as well, so right. four to five songs mm -hmm. that, that feature us of who we are. Right. We so, so your about. lineup for tomorrow will be Kevin on bass. Yeah, I'll be playing bass, and mm -hmm. along with uh, James, who's playing the percussions. Mm -hmm. um, and also, there will be another. Very interesting uh, uh, feature tomorrow is uh, Kristen Palencia. Mm -hmm. He's the brother of uh, Mia, Mia Palencia. Palencia. Yeah. Yes, yes. So he's actually a very young guy, uh, 18 or 19, mm -hmm. but he plays guitar very well and has a very nice voice. And, and I'm sure he learned how to play the guitar from uh, Roger Wang. Uh, that's debatable. That's uh, debatable. <laughs> that's debatable. <laughs> we'll ask him tomorrow. Yeah, we, I think we should find out tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, he got his. Uh, is inroads to the guitar world from Roger Wong. Yeah, it could have started from there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they started a long time ago, Mia and Roger, and mm. you know, are they still together there too? Um, when they have projects, I think they do, mm. but currently I think uh, they're both working on their own. Right. Separate yeah. projects. Right. No, no albums yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's sample a little bit of your music, and we're going to come back and talk about it. Well, what song are you going to play us now? This is a song, um, a new song called Unwasted Time. Unwasted Time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it came for the idea that you know, if we're spending time at work together um, mm -hmm. or we see each other every day and the idea is that hey let, let's make a difference and uh, you know let's let's do this right right yeah so, so that's the whole idea mm -hmm. okay let's go for it this is uh kevin tessera and joe loy with unwasted time right here on 812 live Panama radio 24 this is the lounge Wait a while 
Sometimes I just wonder when you're not around. What would I do if I don't have you? I hope it's not too late now. Cause in the end, I ask myself, have I been wasting time sitting all around? There's a mark on you that's called a smile. Whoa, cause in the That was uh, Joe Loy and Kevin Tassera. Is Woo! that a, a name for your outfit? Uh, there must be a name of some sort for your outfit, your band. Well, right now, because actually me and Joe go way back. We knew each other back when we were in primary school. Right. So right you, now... You need to come into the mic a little bit. Uh, sorry. So uh. me and Joe used to know each other back from way back in uh, high school. Yeah. Uh, sorry, primary school. Primary school. So like, tomorrow is actually a combination of... Uh, Coming back together after a long, 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 long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the name of our outfit, I think, is going to be Joloy and Friends. Joloy and, jo jo and Friends, <laughs> love. Uh, so this is the three of us, so the Joloy trio. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, what Sounds happened good. was, I think we, we met each other at uh, one of the open mics, like I said. Right. And I said, hey man, what are you doing <laughs> yeah. uh, on the 28th of February? You know, so like, yeah, I've got some songs. You want, you want to play with me? Uh, would you want to play bass for me? And um, he said, okay, let's do it. You know, so right. yeah. That, that's how it happened. So, but but you guys know have known each other for a very very long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We used to share food. <laughs> we used to share food in school. Uh. Yeah, primary school. Yeah, he, he was a really gracious man <laughs> because I would bring only fifty cent uh -huh. and could only afford a nasi goreng, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. he would have nasi goreng and some extra layers of bread. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I said, hey, Kevin, uh, you know, is it okay if I like, you know? It wasn't so tragic <laughs> lah. <laughs> yeah, but without fear for 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 as long as I remember on my primary school life. Recess time has always been about sharing. Yeah. About sharing. Yeah, he's always been giving me bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, even if I didn't ask. So, like, so the fact that you're alive today playing music is probably because of Kevin giving you <laughs> yeah. bread. Yeah, from, from my mom, from my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was really nice. Well, well, coming back to your music, you know, a, a songwriting, Joe. You know, what kind of songs do you write? Uh, tell us a little bit about this song that you, uh, you played a while ago mm -hmm. and the other songs that you've got lined up for tomorrow night. Great. Um, I think most of my songs are based on everyday life. Mm -hmm. um, Hope, despair, love, right, trust, right. Mm -hmm. uh, a better future, my poor dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So I want to cultivate the idea that um, it's always great, or it's good, or you, it's able, you are able to put everyday life experience to songs. You know, right. and uh, the idea is to get um, to tell people about your story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and about your poor dog. What, what do you write about your poor dog? Um, he wrote a song about his dog, mm -hmm. which has uh, two sides to the story, but. Right. And, and what, what, what dog are we talking about here? It's a mongrel. Uh, it's a mongrel. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I call it the Bumi Retriever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he had a unique name. Uh, we named him Bagus. Bagus. B-A-G-U-Z. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, he's one of my favorite dogs for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the fact that when I had him, mm -hmm. Um, I used to mistreat him quite a fair bit. Yeah. Um, not not mistreating as I, I didn't take a high heel shoe and step on his tail or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. I I play very I was very rough with him when I play with him. You know and and uh, and uh, and because he has this really bad habit of of uh, biting shoes, so I had to discipline him a fair bit, and it really gets on my nerves. Mm -hmm. uh, but it time came and went, and I realized that one uh, one day he's he's no longer with me anymore. Mm -hmm. And I and I start to miss Bagus really. And I said, right. Oh gosh. You know, you, you were such a good dog. Well, if you want two Great Danes, I can give them to you. Oh, you know? <laughs> oh man, that's, that's <laughs> tempting. Well, coming back to the music, so you, you write all these songs about, about everyday life, and you know, how do you get uh, people to listen to them? How do you sell them? Uh, do you, how do you air them? I think like right now, um, one of the ways that I think it's, it's great that you guys get us in here, yeah. mm -hmm. but for the most part of it, I think a lot of it's got to do with uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. Facebook. Right. SoundCloud. You you wouldn't you wouldn't believe the uh, possibilities of Facebook and sharing your music with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one of the effective ways is self promotion, self publication, um, just being very thick thick skin about it. Right. So it does, people won't 
know how your music sounds like or they, they wouldn't be able to understand it unless they've heard it. Mm-hmm. So the important thing is just to get it out there. Right. So rather than just depend on radio stations which require a lot of resources, mm-hmm. why not you know take it on our own self, share it with people, mm-hmm. um, word of mouth. But, 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 what, what about radio stations? Uh, everyone's talking about you know helping people who uh, come up with alternative music, alternative albums, you know. Uh, but is that happening? I think at the end of the day, for most corporations, especially radio stations, they need to make money. Mm-hmm. So for them to make money, people need to like the music that they play. Right. So a yeah. lot of people, a lot of companies or radio stations might not think that local Malaysian music is good enough. But the truth is, we have so much talent here, yeah. and right. they're actually leaving the country. Mm-hmm. So how do you see this talent selling themselves outside Malaysia when uh, people within the country uh, don't help them? I think it's the recognition that's given. Um, uh, for example, there's two great musicians that I know of recently that uh, spread their wings overseas, like mm-hmm. um, Yuna right. has got a, an American label that's pushing her. Um, I think even Prema Yin's got an mm-hmm. A&R company that's uh, promoting her. And recently, I think Liana Fizi's got a Japanese label yeah. that's promoting her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, and these are Malaysian singers, but uh, musicians like you guys, you know, where, where do you get to play you know, other than gigs you guys put together? Uh, I think that for the most part of it, when we play for famous people or artists, that's where mm-hmm. we get to go. But as an artist, as a musician itself, I think it's not, Malaysia is not at that point where they're ready to accept instrumental music or just artists. Unless there's a voice to it, then people feel more connected to it or easier to relate to. Mm-hmm. That's why songwriters is like the in thing right now. People find it easy to listen to their stories rather than just listen to a piece of music playing. Right, yeah. right. So uh, this Joe Law and Friends uh, gig, is about you guys working together, but, but on your own, uh, the music you're making, uh, Kevin, do you mm. make music on your own, with well, your own outfit, your own band? I have another outfit called the uh, As Samad Trio, so mm-hmm. that's a pretty much instrumental outfit, right. but uh, As Samad is a very talented guitar is he, player. Is he here? Is he back? Uh, yes, he's based Solar here. Mm-hmm. He just came back from the Philippines uh, International Jazz Festival, where he was a featured artist, so mm-hmm. right now we are working on a trio and we're planning a tour this year, so right. probably... Um, Somewhere in the middle of the year, but we don't know the exact date yet. We don't, don't know the exact date yet. Yeah. So th- this pro, this thing you hap- uh, that's happening on the twenty eighth once again. I- if one wants more information, how how do you uh, go go there? Uh, one way is uh, to just look for Moonshine Care on Facebook. Yeah. Moonshine Care yeah. on Facebook. Is that illegal? Using a name like Moonshine Care. Oh no no no! Moonshine uh, just uh, features a uh, acoustic. I was just kidding. Local. <laughs> <laughs> the other the other. Uh, Way is to get to uh, the B. Uh, mm-hmm. th- that's the restaurant we'll be playing in. The B. The B. Yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow night will be from uh, 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. onwards. We'll be there early, so yeah, because it's always packed at Jaya One. Mm-hmm. We have it at uh, the B at Jaya One and the B at Publica, and the one at Jaya One always fills up really fast. Mm-hmm. So, so be there early before yeah, eight if you so want to get a seat. Right. right. And, 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 and for people who really want to get involved in what you are doing and just come out there, you know, if I've uh, if I haven't been to an open mic session mm-hmm. and I want to go there. Uh, what should I equip myself with other than the songs that I'm writing? Um, a lot of courage, mm-hmm. a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence, mm-hmm. um, and just, just pure, pure fun. Yeah, just be honest. Uh, don't be pretentious. Right. Yeah, just express yourself. Mm. Well, what, what can go wrong at an open mic night? No, uh, everyone writes their own songs <laughs> and come in. Oh, <laughs> Uh, it, it could be the case of the squealing dog. The squealing dog, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, uh, songs in two yeah, has, that, has that happened? Well, I, I've done it once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you for being honest. Uh, <laughs> but I think the most obvious one, is, most obvious one would be that uh, people tend to forget the lyrics, you know, mm-hmm. then they hum and then they, they, they stop and then they probably like... Uh, but that, that's not bad at all. Yeah, know? yeah. I mean, but, but, you know, someone going there with a song and, you know, a song that everyone just hates. Uh, has that happened? No, 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 I, no. The, the audience is the Malaysian audience is really kind. Yeah. You'd be surprised; they're actually very forgiving. Even though you make a mistake, start again, they'll give you encouragement, they clap for you, and all that. They're really yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like like Joe said, this is a community of people that wants to see the scene get better. Mm-hmm. So I think um, the people who come are really open minded. They want to listen yeah. to so new they're music. Just, they're not just musicians. Per yeah. Se, you know. Right. Yeah, they're from really everywhere: designers, mm-hmm. yeah. bankers, or you know. Anyone, yeah, and they also want to sing as well. And, and what we're we talking about, speaking of designers, you know, do do they feature your, you know, Malaysian music in uh, the shows, so on, so forth? Uh, recently, uh, there's this movie called uh, the Relationship Status, yeah. featured mm-hmm, a right. lot of local music. Right, Asama is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was the Rolling Sixes, uh, OJ Law, mm-hmm. um, Darren Ashley, Darren Ashley, uh, 
um, it's really great. It's a great movie. If you haven't watched it, you should. Right. The relationship status. The relationship yeah. status, yeah? yeah. So for those of us who haven't watched that, uh, a good movie featuring a Malaysian music. Well, uh, speaking of Malaysian music too, uh, with what you guys are doing, it's a great thing, you know, and uh, uh, trying to make the scene a bit more healthier is so also a very good thing. But how do you get the younger guys involved, those coming out of schools or music schools? I'm sure you went through a, to that, that that same problem when you came out, you know, no one invites yes, you to play yes. here or, you know, you want to go and play there, but who do you see? You know, that's always the case. Are you making this an avenue for the younger boys? Well, yeah, yeah I mean, the fact that we have an 18-year-old who's... I mean, the younger musicians that come out nowadays mm -hmm. sound ten times better than we were when we came out. <laughs> you, you, wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to hear how we sing, <laughs> yeah. how we sound like when we were seventeen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Kristen Palenza is a very talented guitar player. I think um, the way he plays guitar is really not something that I would be able to do at his age. Mm -hmm. so, Neither would I. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of other good singers um, that came out as well, mm -hmm. um, like who uh, the Impatient Sisters. These right. three girls who sing beautiful beautiful harmonies in acoust acoustic music and they sound so unique mm -hmm. uh, you can check them out on the IMSIS on YouTube right. the, 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 the tag is IMSIS mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well uh, speaking on that uh, I think besides the performance platform we need to explore the other areas in terms of events mm -hmm. lecturing teaching mm -hmm. um, radio, PR, DJing. radio DJing you right. know uh, right. content so in a sense we just can't <laughs> box music on a performance platform but of course it's good to be on the, on the level. Mm -hmm. So um, with my experience in, in KLPAC as a guest teacher for the speech and drama program, um, of course producing the artists in the studio, um, doing live sound for, for the shows, I think the avenues of music for the younger generation has um, been expounded so much more than, than many, many, many years before. Mm -hmm. And so if, if, if my student were to tell me, you know, I'm graduating soon, I need an internship, mm -hmm. right? And my, my first question to them is, what would you like to do? Right. Uh, so some of them say we want to do events. Mm -hmm. Some would say I want to perform. Some would say I would like to do live sound. Some would just prefer to work in the studio. So I said, okay, great. You know, if you want that, I would, I would, I would give that to you. Right. Yeah. So what happened is that I, as a lecturer and also a person in the industry, I'm allowing them to have a feel of it already. Mm -hmm. So build, build the confidence, build the assurance. Of course, uh, with good, hopefully with with uh, good guidance, that they will do much better than. Mm -hmm. than <laughs> so uh, you know you you've you've uh, put together four or five songs for tomorrow night. Mm. Uh, any other song that you want to play for us? I know we'll be more than happy to sample another song just to Joe, get the songwriter. <laughs> oh gosh, um, you want to do your slow song? Uh, slow song, yes. Let's mm. do a slow song. Mm -hmm. Not kindness, the other one. Before tonight. Uh, before tonight. Okay, let's go okay. for before tonight. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, in the studios right here at the lounge, Kevin Tessera and Joe Lloyd, they're having a great gig happening tomorrow night. We'll come back and give you those details in a short while. In the meantime, here's Before Tonight, Joe Lloyd. One, two, three, four. Tonight, my 
A paradox of life is captured by a never changing light. It's the giver of life before tonight. Joe Loy and Kevin Tessera. It's all happening tomorrow night. Once again, guys, where is it happening? Uh, it's happening at uh, Jaya One. The B. The B. The B. The B mm -hmm. Cafe. Yeah. Uh, right. 9 p.m. the show starts. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get a seat, come before 8. Come before 8. If you want to get a seat and if you need more information, you log on to Moonshine KL at Facebook. Moonshine KL at Facebook and you'll get all the information you want about the open mic night with uh, Joe Loy. And friends, of course, if you've written a couple of tunes, uh, you've got a friend to play, play the guitar for you, go there and belt mm. it out yeah, and, yeah. and you never Please know do. what will happen. Yeah? Yeah. Come and sign up. Right. You know, for, for those of us who've been writing songs for a long while and we're shy to go out and do something about it, and your advice to them, guys. Just or to it. us. Yeah? yeah. Come on. Or if you're still shy. No, when, when you go up and play, you know, do you feel like... The, the, is this song good enough? I, I'm feeling that right now, so <laughs> <laughs> that never goes away, really. Um, I yeah. think mm -hmm. that the important thing is just to remember that you no, know, the reason why you wrote the song, yeah, yeah it's um, right. and just be honest with yourself why you're singing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the great. substance of it is very important. Mm -hmm. so. The substance is yeah. important. So it's happening at the B Cafe Jaya One tomorrow night. If you want a seat, be there by 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. If you want more information, just log on to Moonshine KL. Moonshine KL on Facebook and get all the info you need about the open mic night, Joe Loy and friends happening tomorrow at Jaya One, the B Cafe. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Jaya. Uh, stay with us. Coming up shortly is News 24 Extra, right here on A12 Live, Padama Radio 24. Woo. Woo. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh.